Hey, Brian, I appreciate your time today. It's nice to chat with you after uh, the team gets rolling. And as a Vikings fan, as most of us who sit and and watch these games, we can see it kind of coming together. And you start stringing together wins, and we start thinking about like where we are and positioning and how it's all kind of starting to roll downhill. For you guys inside the locker room, what does that feel like when momentum starts building like that? Um, you know, obviously it's exciting that, you know, people think that way and other people get to talk about it. But for us, it's even like a bigger reminder that, you know, the task at hand is the most important. And for us, it's like, okay, we've kind of dug ourselves back a little bit. You know, we kind of got ourselves, uh, we've worked really hard to get back to where we are now in the last couple of weeks, but none of that really matters unless we go out and take care of business on Sunday. So um, I think it's pretty good if we're able to kind of sit, sit, sit back and say, you know, that's all good, but you know, it only matters if we go out and win on Sunday and go and play well and execute. So um, I think we can understand it and then use it to help us. Uh, in our well, I'll tell you a guy who has helped you a lot and you have helped as well as Dalvin Cook. And he's been just incredible this season. And in particular, uh, the two games prior to this past one, when, when he was the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. As an offensive lineman, what is that like when you know you've created a space for Dalvin and you can look up and just see him bust something? Uh, it's a really cool feeling, and it's also a really cool feeling knowing the space doesn't have to be that much because he can take a little bit and turn it into a lot in a blink of an eye. Um, but, you know, we've seen it from him, uh, you know, the past couple of years. Ever since I've been here, he's been able to do that, and uh, it's a great feeling. It's a lot different because a lot of the times you're just blocking your guy and you're used to hearing the crowd get really loud if you're at home or the away crowd get really quiet if you're on the road when he breaks a long one, but uh, now sometimes you're just like holding on for dear life and then you look over and he's gone and it's pretty cool. So the crowd and lack of crowd, I should say, is um, as someone who's watching football, I've kind of gotten used to it. It's like we settle into the new norm. Mm -hmm. As someone who's on the field, have we played enough games where this is starting to feel normal or are there times when you're just looking up or listening or going, God, this is so awkward? Um, well, when you get to the line, in my mind, like once you break the huddle and you're walking to the ball, everything kind of goes silent anyways, whether there's crowd or no crowd. But for me, it's like the TV timeouts or the uh, in-between quarters or we're waiting for the ref to start the ball. And it's like a, the dead time feels a lot more quiet. Uh, but what's interesting is like I went home and watched the TV copy of our game and it sounds so much louder on TV than it is in person. It really? Is really quiet in there. Um, so, you know, we just got to bring our own energy and understand that, you know, we don't have our great fans there to, like, give us a home field advantage, and we kind of got to bring it ourselves. But you guys hear some of the artificial crowd noise, I would assume. Do you hear uh, some? A little bit, and kind of depends what stadium and when throughout the game is. But uh, a lot of teams have been playing music, which is good. I, we've been playing music some, too, lately, which is good. But, like, beginning of the year was really quiet. They've kind of gotten used to it, and they've, they, everybody's gotten better at it. Uh, kind of filling the space with sound and uh, mm -hmm. things. But kudos to our production team at US Bank because they always play like the same videos they would play as if there were stands on the board. Or, like like on the big video screens, they play yeah. all their normal promotional stuff and like uh, content. So we all watch it like, and there's nobody else there but us watching it. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I think guys are important fans then, just so uh, that in. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's really interesting for those viewers to hear some of the cadence and the play call and the, the words that are shouted out, which you guys all know what they mean when it's like red, Omaha, Hopper, some, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Have you had to curb any of your own language just knowing that there's not the crowd to ground that out? Uh, I wouldn't say I've had it. We've had a curb language in our calls, but definitely like, right after the play or right before the play, it might not be a specific call. You definitely know you got to keep it PG. Uh, some of us have more trouble with that than others. <laughs> I have to filter myself quite a bit. But, but you've done it successfully? I've, I've tried to. I've tried to. So I haven't, I haven't been told it's been out of hand. So uh, Today is a really beautiful day in Minnesota, and I myself spent uh, some of the morning hanging up some Christmas lights on the trees out front. Uh, when it comes to holiday time, 
for you in general? Do you lean more toward like the Grinch side? You just like everything quiet and small and calm? Or are you more on like the Clark Griswold side where you want the, the lights everywhere? Where do you rank? Uh, I'm a big Christmas guy. I love the fact that our O-line room, we, they decorate it for Christmas. Uh, they go pretty, uh, the rookies in the O-line room do a really good job decorating the O-line room. I love it. I loved doing it when I was a rookie. Um, but at the same time, like I've always for the last six, seven years had football. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of times in college, you're on the road playing in a bowl game uh, or you wake up on Christmas and you have practice in the afternoon here. This year we get to play on Christmas. So it's pretty cool. Um, obviously, I miss my family, but I know it's pretty cool to be some be a part of something that's bigger than yourself and bigger like than I don't want to say bigger than Christmas, but you have a bigger goal that day than just celebrating Christmas. Um, and my family understands they get it. I'll be around for Easter or something. Yeah, that's part of the business. Yeah. Is your O-line room ready decorated for the season? Uh, no, right now it's decorated for Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, October 1st, for the whole month of October, it's decorated for Halloween. November 1st, it's decorated for the whole month for Thanksgiving. And then December 1st, it's decorated the whole month for Christmas. And Christmas is like the, that's like the standard. So like everything builds up to Christmas. So you have a couple of the Stewart kind of rookies in there to really get those decorations right are we the youtubing it on how to like put put christmas decorations together uh they look at old videos from guys in years past who have done it and they've we've been doing it for a while and then uh one of our guys brett jones who's a veteran helps them out every year and he helped me out when i was a rookie he likes doing it so it's fun it's cool to like come in on like the first day of the month and you're like it's pretty cool we'll have some cheer around yeah there. oh yeah holiday cheer god spread it come on yeah. Okay, well, Brian, uh, we'll let you go, but we thank you so much for your time. Good luck against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday. Uh, we Vikings fans will be rooting you on, and we love the momentum that you guys have brought so far this season. Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time.